Wanna play a sick game where you run with this Oni mask wearing sword guy, chopping demons and speed running action at light speed? Then welcome to Neon White. Did I mention it's got cards? It's got cards. What I just said portrays the entirety of Neon White in a nutshell. It's got tons of snarky characters with personalities that everyone wears on their sleeve. It's trying simultaneously to be really sarcastic, where the entire cast pokes fun at a story that no one is taking seriously, while trying to embrace the saved world plot at the same time. Luckily for everyone, story is definitely the least important aspect of Neon White. Gameplay is where Neon White shines, with story only serving to give the player a reason to run and gun. Also, I really love card games. So Neon White already had my attention from the get-go. Joking aside, Neon White is some of the most fun I've had in a fast-paced shooting game in quite some time. The aforementioned cards are a great way to spice up the classic speedrun formula, as players see themselves partaking in over 90 levels of frenetic action, picking up cards that act both as ammunition for various types of weapons, as well as one-off use abilities. As much as I write off the story as an excuse plot, it still does a great job of contributing to the overall hyperactive theme and feel of the game, which is definitely important. So let's get to basics. Neon White is a run and gun speedrun shooter about a titular white, a guy with amnesia who joins the other neons in a yearly tradition where sinners are forced to work as glorified janitors for the believers in a competition where they must hunt demons in heaven. The winner of this competition is given the opportunity to stay in heaven for one year until the competition happens all over again. Gameplay is classic high-speed frenetic action where the goal of every stage is to kill all the demons before reaching the exit. Players are rewarded with medals depending on performance and a hidden collectible is located in each stage which unlocks after clearing it once. What makes Neon White unique is the card function I mentioned earlier. Cards act as both the primary weapons in the game as well as one-time abilities that players can access by discarding cards. This dual utility for cards is the heart of Neon White, and levels are all built around players making maximum use of both. The feeling of gunning down an enemy moments before throwing out a card into the ground smash for that little bit of time save is about as awesome as it sounds. The card system is pretty smart in several ways. By having players only able to hold a maximum of two cards, stages never get too complicated in trying to tell players of what it wants them to do. The fact that cards are immediately swapped to the active slot when picked up means levels can be designed where players feel comfortable knowing that the next part will probably want them to use the card they just acquired somehow. The pace of a single level pretty much never stops from beginning to end, and if it does stop since the player gets stuck, they can be rewarded on their second run through once they know what to do. Speaking of which, speed running is at the core of what makes Neon White tick. But unlike many games with this sort of mindset, Neon White is actually very friendly to new players. For one, when levels are played as intended, they are all nearly a minute or shorter with only a handful of outliers near the end of the game. This makes it so that when you are retrying stages in order to get the Ace Meadows, it's a pretty rewarding experience as opposed to a dreadful one. In a worst case scenario, even if you make a mistake at the very end, it's still only like a minute lost. Two, the game is incredibly tight in terms of gameplay and level design. Levels have a flow to them that is immediately recognizable by the player. While at first it might be a tad bit confusing starting out, thanks to the card system I already went into detail with, it's easy to pick up what the game wants you to do. Levels are all about figuring out what to do with each tool as the game hands it to you. Every 10 levels you get access to a new stage which introduces a new mechanic that shakes things up. Whether that be the addition of trip wires or an entirely new weapon or ability that will be central for many of the future stages. 3. While the game is indeed a shooter, it's a pretty forgiving one where more emphasis is placed on using specific tools at the right time as opposed to being incredibly good at aiming. You know I can confirm this is the case because I cleared the entirety of Neon White using switch controllers and a gyroscope function. Was this a great idea on my part? Probably not because I'm definitely a mouse and keyboard sort of player before I'm a console shooter, but it proves the point that you don't need to be good at shooting to be good at Neon White. Utilizing card abilities in the right location is far more important than sniping enemies. That's not to say shooting is entirely unimportant, but when the game does want you to shoot enemies, it's generally an easy affair as opposed to say, sniping someone hundreds of miles away. I also really liked how they separated different metal times, both in reward and even the time itself. There are four levels, bronze for completing the stage, then silver, gold, and then ace or platinum. 
okay, technically there is a fifth level, the Red Meadow, which is to beat the developer time, but I admit I was too lazy to try and get any while playing on the Switch. These Red Meadows are entirely for bragging rights and nothing else. What I think Neon White does incredibly well is that Ace Meadows in every stage are technically achievable on the first try if the player performs really well on the initial predetermined track that is laid out by the stage. If they performed well but not amazing, then chances are they'll get gold, which puts a hint in every stage that takes a player off the beaten path and skips a portion of the stage, making the Ace Medal far more achievable even with a few mistakes. Having the Ace Medal be achievable even without the shortcut makes them feel far more rewarding than if they were only accessible by intentionally breaking the flow of the stage. On the other hand, the Goat Hint makes it so that the player is given a chance to get the Ace Meadow without having to bash their head into the wall over and over until they can reach near perfect status. The collectibles are also great in the sense that it breaks up the already established flow of the stage, usually requiring you to save a card that you'd normally use for a later part by thinking outside the box. Figuring out which card to save and where this hidden box can be found gives every stage a second level of replayability after getting the Ace Meadow. More importantly, I like the fact that there is a real incentive to get every collectible, namely that collecting all of them opens up additional dialogue with important characters in the game and is required for the good ending. Personally, I always need some sort of incentive to go for this sort of thing, as collecting for a collection's sake only carries me so far before I start to question what's the point in doing so. Speaking of characters, let's finally talk about them. In the introduction, I kind of caught the plot the least important part of Neon White, and while I stand by that statement, that doesn't mean I think it shouldn't exist. In my opinion, I'd rather have a game that has a fun dumb plot as opposed to a game with no plot at all. I think a story goes a long way in acting as a motivation for players to progress to the next set of stages. While Neon White's plot doesn't go anywhere special, the characters do a great job of popping into respective roles. Yellow is the dumb doofus of a best friend, Violet is the maniac murderous pixie dream girl, Red is the sexy femme fatale girlfriend, Green is the buff megalomaniac, and White is the geeky katana wielding guy who's pretending to be a tough lone wolf. For better or for worse, no one takes anything that's happening in the plot remotely seriously. A character will straight up die to the main villain and in the next scene, White will be out there grilling a hot dog with said villain. While this kind of thing completely tosses out the stakes in the story as why the heck should we care about anything that happens to the characters if they clearly don't, it does do the job of making the entire cast feel like a super dysfunctional family. White and Red putting up with Violet constantly trying to murder them does seem like something that would only be the case if this has been a running constant throughout their life. This alongside the hyper energetic drum and bass soundtrack by Machine Girl really contributes to the overall vibe the game has going for it. Although they play around with the idea of maybe some of the characters are merely acting like huge idiots for about 5 minutes, it's quickly revealed that nope, everyone's exactly who they appear to be. As for the story itself, it's fine, the usual saving the world by the end of the game. The secret ending is kinda disappointing also, it's like an extra 40 seconds tacked onto the normal ending of the game. Luckily, getting all the collectibles and ace medals is such a fun experience that anyone who's played that far into Neon White would already be sucked into the speedrun grind with the secret ending just being a go for the sake of being a go. Really, if you had watched like 5 minutes of the game anywhere, including this video, you can already figure out just from that whether Neon White would be something up your alley or not. It's fun, it's dumb, and it feels great going fast as heck. While it isn't the card sling action I thought it was going to be upon first hearing of it, the disposable card system in Neon White for guns and abilities makes for a crazy quick level design that's incredibly intuitive. If you were looking to hop into a speedrun kind of game that's way more accessible than many of the others out there, then Neon White is the perfect fit for just that. And if you already love speedrun games, then Neon White's card mechanic will be a breath of fresh air. All supportive stuff, like subscribe notifications are in the same place as always. I'll see you later, till next time.